Alexander Usyk almost stops Tyson Fury. Right. Uh, right. Had a knockdown that wasn't really a knockdown. I count that as a stop. I've seen stop. I mean, I think it's the, the level of fighters that they are. They decided, you know, let it swing. But no, that anyone else gets hurt like that, you know, moving around that way. Matter of fact, when you look at the end of um, uh, Raymond Ford's fight, it was similar. Like God going Very all similar. around the ring, hitting every corner. You can call that if you want to, but he, the ref gave him some grace with the standing eight count. So uh, that was that was uh, you know. That happened. It, it's in the rules, but I think that could have been easily a stoppage right there. What'd you think of the fight as a whole? I felt like, um, you know, Tyson controlled the pace early. You know, he was doing some things early. And I think in the middle rounds, he started imposing his size a little bit. But uh, I, I don't think um, Usyk, you know, was unprepared for that. I think he knew what was coming. I, he knew Tyson was going to try to move around, but also put his body on him when they got in close. And uh, he was prepared for it. When, uh, when he caught him against the ropes, to me, it was like Tyson thought he was protected. He had his high guard up. And Usyk just rounded that left hand off and caught him on, a, on an angle that he wasn't ready for. And usually when you're fighting a guy that's a southpaw, they can hit you from angles that you normally feel like you're safe in, and you can defend in, especially when you're a guy that likes to roll, like um, like um, uh, Floyd Mayweather versus Chop Chop Corley, or like Floyd Mayweather versus Zab Judah. That shoulder roll don't work as well when you fight in the southpaw. Andre Berto versus Ortiz, you can't really get out the way of those those uh, left hands the same way you can if that's a right that's period. Is that why a lot of people implement the high guard instead of the shoulder roll because of that? You, yeah, when you fight in the southpaw anyway, yeah. And then also, you got to kind of trick your mind into slipping in the opposite direction. Like you want to slip against a southpaw going to your left, not to your right, because you're going right into their power when you slip over your right shoulder. That's a good point, because naturally, Go to your yeah. Right. So learning how to do that backwards on like some on some like automatic tip that's hard to do in a camp. So if you're not a guy that trains to do that anyway, it's hard to put that in place for a fighter that's been slipping one way since he was eight. You know what I mean? Mm. So I think that's that's part of the reason uh, uh, Fury got hurt because when he went into that guard, he didn't expect to be able to get hit in the, in the ear. I think it knocked his equilibrium off, and then he got himself uh, busted up after that. Does the rematch look different? I mean, it could. It's a, this is a heavyweight division. Rematches could look, you know, Lennox Lewis versus Rockman. Did they look? Or, or Olive McCall? Did they look different? Rematches can look different in the heavyweight division quite easily. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's just the way it goes. But um, you know, maybe there doesn't need to be one because with the way the heavyweight division is shaping out now, man. You know, if they fight other people in between, it makes other interesting fights down the line. Like Parker now is an interesting fight against whoever he fights. Joshua. So there's other names now in the heavyweight division where you can still make good money, make big fights, and kind of avoid each other till maybe a year or two down the line. They don't have to do it right away. You know, what I mean? I'm starting to see that in every division, but mainly the heavyweight division for sure. There's a lot going on up there. That's why I think this uh, BY fight on the 24th is magic as well because, you know, after this fight, I think he's right in the conversation there too, somewhere as like one of those guys that can fight some of those guys. And that's August 24th at the Met. August 24th at the Met, man, on Broad Street, Philadelphia, PA, man, all day. Yeah, I Right can, down the street from where I grew up. Yo, I could see you putting BY against shit. Um, who just who just lost? The kid, uh, Frank Sanchez, he lost to Aga Caballero. Yeah. Um, the loser of Daniel Dubois versus uh, Philip Herkovich. You could put BY in, in a whole bunch of matchups. BY versus Wilder, we never got a chance to see it. Right, right. Those fights are crazy, but uh, yeah, those those uh, those are compelling uh, uh, narratives and fights that, that can be made. But like I said, I, I don't put the cart before the horse, man. I leave that to you know the matchmakers that's doing what they do, and all I'm trying to do is make sure this first event, this inaugural event, is uh, is what we anticipated being, which is a hit.